What's going on, Washington Commanders Nation? It's your boy, Real Robinson, back with the latest and greatest on the Rambling with Rio YouTube channel, where we ramble about the Washington Commanders. Another day, another acquisition by our busy-ass Washington Commanders franchise. This offseason, we signed our 21st player of this offseason. We brought in another linebacker. Yes, you heard me correctly. You know, a position that we criminally neglected over the years to the point that it felt like the league banned us from giving tender loving care to the linebacker position it's like the it's like goodell sanctioned us not to develop add or put anything in the linebacker room, we signed another linebacker. That's linebacker Michael Walker. I think it's Michael or Mike Kyle. Not sure. It's spelled kind of wonky, but former Steeler and former Falcon. Another connection to our head coach. Dan Quinn was the guy who drafted Michael Walker in the 2020 draft. Fourth round, 119th pick out of Fresno State. And this is a guy who started some games in this league. He's not here just to be some special teams extraordinaire kind of guy. He's here to actually play. I'm looking at his production right now. He had one really good season of production and a bunch of mid rotational shit. So he had a season where he had over a hundred tackles and then he had a few seasons of like 50, 20, 17, stuff like that. He started five games for the Steelers last year. He was a surprise cut from the Atlanta Falcons in 2022. I did a little reconnaissance and research as to why he was cut from the Atlanta Falcons. They were moving in a different direction. You know, when he was next to Foye Aluakon before he moved and got the bag to Jacksonville, they had a nice little linebacker pairing there of two guys over 100 tackles there in Atlanta. But according to fans and YouTube content creators and such, he was having a horrible camp in preseason that year. Like it just looked bad. He looked slower. There were a lot of coverage lapses, and they were ready to move on at the position. He ended up getting released and picked up by the Pittsburgh Steelers, who kept him around for a year. He only started five games there. Depth signing. like it's. I like the way we've handled the linebacker position because we can draft a linebacker to put behind all these veterans that we have. We now have a linebacker room that consists of Frankie Louvu, Dog, Bobby Wagner, Hall of Fame dog, Jamin Davis, ascending. We're going to see just how good Speed Racer Davis can be. We added Keandre Jones. We added Anthony Pittman, who's going to be the special teams mostly, but also can play linebacker guy. Anthony Pittman and Michael Walker have similar profile, 6'3", 225, 6'3", 220. We're looking for bigger, athletic, sideline-to-sideline -side linebackers, and we no longer have to worry about a room that has guys like David Mayo breaking down the huddle with a green dot, Cody Barton, relying on Jags like Kalik Hudson and selling ourselves on the dream that he could be a legit NFL linebacker one day. Slow as molasses guys like Mason Foster or John Bostic. I'm washed up and out of shape as hell right now. I'm mixing up John Bostic and Mason Foster on a wheel route or an option route right now. Give me a choice route on John Bostic or Mason Foster. I'm pretty sure every single person that listens to this video is putting Mason Foster or John Bostic in a fucking blender. That's how putrid the linebacker room has been over the years we have not had a significant producing linebacker since london fletcher cole holcomb was i right. jamin davis has been i right through the first few years of his contract but he has not yet lived up to the billing of a first round pick we go out this year and say all right jamin you want to earn a fifth year option you want to earn a second contract here you need to be better because we don't need you anymore Frankie Louvu, Bobby Wagner, Michael Walker, Anthony Pittman, and the draft still to come. We don't need you. You are now expendable. So get with the program or kick rocks. And you better not get caught speeding, drag racing, or none of that bullshit ever again. Learn from your past mistakes. Learn from what just happened with Rasheed Rice 
And with all these guys, I seen somebody created a Need for Speed PS5 game with all the NFL players on it. That shit is not funny, but it is at the same time. But Jamin, it's put up or shut up time. Because not only do we have dog starters, we have depth pieces. And we still have nine draft picks. So we could be adding another linebacker to the room to learn from the veteran guys. I think the highest ceiling linebacker on the team is obviously Frankie Luvu, the Polynesian missile. He's going to play with his hair on fire and... He he, you know, he got a screw loose. You could tell that if you follow him on social media, watch his page a little bit. He's exactly how I li- like my linebackers. I like my linebackers with a little mental illness. I like them with a little mental unstableness. You know, he got a screw loose. I feel like we had too many nice guys in the in the linebacker room. Cody Barton's too nice, man. He's the type of guy you want to marry your daughter. He's the type of guy you want around. I, I don't need that. I need a little bit of unstableness, a little bit of dog in that linebacker room. And who better to teach Jamin and another young linebacker than the best middle linebacker of this generation in Bobby Wagner? Not even saying Michael Walker makes the team for us this year, but I'd say there's a good chance of it because we're not holding on to stragglers like David Mayo anymore. So, Fill those spots with more athletic guys like Michael Walker. Not the most athletic in the world. He didn't light up the combine per se, but he had an 8.16 relative athletic score, ran a 4.6, had a 33-inch vertical jump coming out of college. So he's pretty explosive for the most part. The Jabril Cox experiment was another thing that came, went. Is he going to be a part of the equation here? I don't think he's ever going to be a factor in this league. Fans are going to hold out hope because here's what we do as fans. We go through the draft process. We fall in love with guys. We pick our favorites. No matter how their career trajectory plays out over the years, we always remember the nostalgia, the feeling we felt when we were watching that player and learning about that player through the draft process. Jabril Cox is not the player he was drafted to be. I'm not sure he ever gets to that level. He wasn't in Dallas with Dan Quinn. He wasn't here in Washington. Not going to be a part of the plans here. Michael Walker, Anthony Pittman, Jamin Davis, Frankie Louvu, Bobby Wagner. And if we add a guy in the draft, that is going to be your linebacker room. Like, imagine that. We signed four linebackers this offseason. Ron and Jack would never. They would never. It's crazy because they always press the shit out of them in the press conference. Like, Jack Del Rio hated Jamin Davis. He hated that nigga. He would come to the podium and eviscerate him for practice mistakes and game mistakes. He would always call out, he better take a step this year. Are you adjusting to the players on the roster? I think if there's one certainty Washington Commanders fans can have going into the 2024 regular season, it's that our defense will be leaps and bounds, dramatically improved, especially from a coaching aspect. It's going to be significantly better than some of the bullshit we've witnessed over the last couple of years. I'm trying to get past the point of shitting on our ex, you know, I'm trying to not pile on Jack and Ron, but that shit was just so bad. And we got one of the best linebacker coaches in the league, Ken Norton Jr. One of the original coaches who developed Bobby Wagner in this league now gets to see Bobby Wagner during his swan song era here in DC at that Ken Norton Jr. To the list of Joe Witt and Dan Quinn of defensive minds that are going to be shaping the room. Dan Quinn is the specialist of developing the front seven. Joe Witt is a secondary developer. We have guys that speak the language of football and guys who have not forced scheme on anybody from Dan Quinn and Joe Witt's time in Atlanta to Dallas and now to Washington. At each stop, they've showed that they're able to evolve and transcend their scheme to whatever players are on the roster. Welcome to Washington, linebacker Michael Walker. And welcome to Washington, all the players that reported for offseason workouts yesterday. All we got is a one-minute clip, but I need some access. Washington Commanders content team, give us all the access 
of our first team meetings, of the weightlifting process, of guys walking in and out of the building. We're at that point of the offseason where we'll take anything we can get. I seen a video yesterday of Raheem Morris addressing the Falcons team that showed up for offseason workouts for the first time. It's about six and a half minutes. Go to the Falcons social media team or YouTube page and watch it. I can totally get the Raheem Morris theme now. Listening to that speech made me want to run through a wall and play for the Atlanta Falcons myself. I need one of those Dan Quinn things. I need Dan Quinn talking about doing shit, uh, hard shit with good people and riling them boys up, doing the little thumb and pinky finger thing he always does. I need to see it. Content team, bless us with it. Until next time, hail to the Washington Commanders. Rio, out.